Here in the heart of the quiet Suffolk countryside is the home of one of the world's most remarkable jet squadrons. 111 Squadron Royal Air Force. A crack squadron, famed all over the Western world as Treble One. Low cloud this morning, but the Met Man says it will pick up. I hope he's right. And this is the CO, squadron leader Peter Latham. One thing is sure, those hunter jets are ready to go, says Flight Lieutenant Phillips, even if the weather's a bit off-putting. Dicey for aerobatics. The sign? Oh, that was borrowed from the Navy. Even on a fully operational fighter squadron, you sometimes have to be patient. Peter Latham checks with Met. All set to go. And I had a good hand, too. The briefing of Treble One usually lasts quarter of an hour. Today, they're trying a new maneuver, the wine glass. With their nine hunters, they'll form a wine glass shape. What you can't remember, you write on your knee. Here's a useful way of showing the sort of shape you want. They're models of planes flown by earlier pilots of Treble One. Their average age is 27. Snoopy, Paddy Hines' dog, has heard all this before. The world's finest aerobatics team, they've proved themselves against stiff competition. Peter Latham, the boss, 33 years old, married with five young children. All over the continent, they're known as the Black Arrows. Why black? During the war, Treble One skimmed over the regulations forbidding the use of unit markings and painted their Spitfires with black bars along the fuselage. Tradition dies hard in the Royal Air Force. Performance figures for these jets are secret, but they can do more than 700 miles an hour. All clear to go. The Avon jets open up. The Arrow 5, Peter Latham leading. On his immediate right, Paddy Hine, number two. On his left, Matt Kemp at number three. On the right flank, Bill Clayton Jones, number four. On the far left, Oscar Wilde, number five. The box four. Brian Mercer in front. He's number six. Leslie Boyer on his left, number seven. Roger Hyman's right, number eight. Tony Aldridge behind, number nine. They rendezvous at over 300 miles an hour. It's a bit bumpy today. Steady does it. and into the big nine loop. Like a football team, each pilot has his own preferred position. They don't often switch from one flank to the other. Not an ambidextrous one amongst us, they say. What'll they be up to today? And now for that new maneuver, the wine glass. It takes tremendous physical and mental effort, a strong nerve, split-second reactions, and 100% concentration to produce this study and powered elegance. Up in front there, Peter Latham is countering the bumps with precision control. Errors are strictly out. Even slight deviations, of course, are reflected right through the team and are magnified as they ripple through the formation. Colin Hardy is Trevor One's eyes on the ground. His job is to find flaws in the pattern. Rolling now, that looks pretty good. These cadets from Scotland never expected anything like this. Oh, for a pair of silver wings. And if you can fault that one, Flight Lieutenant Hardy, we'd be surprised. Let's find out. The inquest. Debriefing is thorough, detailed, self-critical. The entire flying pattern is gone over move by move for precision, tidiness, and tightness of formation. And there's no getting away from the evidence either. If you were a foot or so out, way up there, they'll all know soon. Just exactly what happened to you, Roger? Me? Well, why pick on me? This is the big show. 
the event they've been practicing for. They've assembled like this to watch Trevor One all the way from Oslo to Lisbon. And here they are. Right on time, Peter Latham has it worked out to a second. Start, taxiing, takeoff, all are allotted their strict times in the schedule. Treble One are proud of their record of never having failed to put in an appearance whatever the weather. Here's that wine glass again. Smoke on, go. The operative word from the leader is go over the radio before every move. The smoke is coming from concealed canisters. Keep it smooth. It costs thousands to train a pilot to cope with these machines. No wonder. The Hunter, say these pilots, is the ideal aircraft for aerobatics. Sleek, beautiful, as graceful as anything that has flown. A lovely roll, parallel with the line of the crowd, four feet between wingtips, and the same short distance in the step down from front to rear. Just clear of the other jets. Four feet. And into the voodoo. A triple one specialty, this. 450 miles an hour, four feet apart and over the top at 180. They need 5,000 feet for a loop like this, and away go too. The big seven roll. Those bumps up there give the same sensation as driving a sports car fast over a rutted road. And each plane produces its own bow wave of air which tends to exert pressure on the one in front. You've got to counter that. And there's wing wash, the air coming off the wings to interfere with the balance of other aircraft alongside. How close can you get? How vertical? It's Peter Latham's job to position the team so as to give the crowd the best possible view. It's just not done in aerobatics to fly at an angle uncomfortable to spectators. When Triple One are flying, no spectator has to lift his sights more than 55 degrees above the horizontal. It's as precise as that. Away go two more. formation. Yes, this is it. Triple One's Piesta Resistance. Their aerobatic payoff that has shaken pilots from a slower age, stirred thousands of people across a continent and caused even the somewhat detached crews of Vulcan bombers to express admiration. The bomb burst. Copyright Triple One. Down go Peter Latham's five. What a maneuver this is. Here they come, right on the dot. Brian Mercer's four and up. Split-second timing is vital. Even the slightest miscalculation and the magnificent pattern is ruined. chalk up. More flying time in the log. We can relax now. Nothing like an energetic game of croquet to stimulate young fighter pilots' appetites. And to work up a thirst. Let's forget fly. Uh, do you think so we might try it this way tomorrow? The hunters go inside for close inspection. The squadron's motto is Ad Stantes. It's a typically English understatement. It means standing by. 